Welcome to today's episode of our series, Turning the Red Planet Green. In this episode, we delve into a crucial aspect of Mars colonization, energy sources for Mars. As we've explored in previous episodes, establishing a human presence on Mars presents a myriad of challenges. One of the most critical is ensuring a reliable and sustainable energy supply for the Martian settlers. Mars, a barren land with no existing power grid, demands innovative solutions for energy generation. The energy needs on Mars are diverse and extensive, ranging from creating oxygen, powering rovers, providing heat and light, to ensuring effective communication. The solutions we devise must be robust, long-lasting, and most importantly, safe for both humans and the sensitive electronic equipment used in these missions. NASA's vision for future power generation on Mars includes nuclear fission systems. Unlike the radioisotope thermoelectric generators used in rovers, like Perseverance fission systems, offer a more powerful alternative. The KiloPower project, a significant stride in this direction, demonstrated a fission experiment capable of producing one kilowatt of power. This experiment, known as Krusty, Kilo Power Reactor using Stirling technology, utilized a core of uranium-235, roughly the size of a paper towel roll, to generate heat, which was then converted into electricity using a Stirling engine. A future fission surface power system, envisioned to be small and lightweight, could potentially run for at least a decade. This makes it an ideal candidate for future missions to the Moon and Mars. NASA, in collaboration with the Department of Energy, has been exploring the development of a 10 kilowatt system. It's estimated that four or five such units could sufficiently power a Mars habitat, catering to the needs of three to four astronauts, which is approximately 40 kilowatts in total. Safety is a paramount concern when it comes to nuclear power, both on Earth and in space. The radioactive elements used, such as uranium, emit radiation that can harm humans and damage nearby electronics. To mitigate this, fission power systems are designed with thick metal shielding to contain the radiation. Additionally, extensive testing on Earth ensures these systems are safe, even under extreme conditions. There's also the issue of using highly enriched uranium, which can be repurposed for nuclear weapons. To address this, future Mars missions might use low enriched uranium, which is safer and aligns with recent National Space Nuclear Policy directives. Solar power, a more commonly used energy source in space missions, presents a viable alternative to nuclear power. The European Space Agency predominantly uses solar power for its missions, including the upcoming Mars rover, Rosalind Franklin. Solar power offers several advantages. It doesn't require additional safety measures like nuclear power, and it's a rapidly evolving technology, promising increased efficiency and ease of use. Solar panels in space need to be highly efficient, as every bit of sunlight must be converted into as much electricity as possible. The ongoing advancements in solar technology are making panels more efficient, lighter, and more cost-effective, which is crucial for their use in space missions. Mars receives less sunlight than Earth, making solar power generation a bit more challenging. However, with the advancements in solar panel technology, it's becoming increasingly feasible to rely on solar energy for Martian missions. The efficiency of solar panels continues to improve, and future missions may see even more advanced solar technologies being deployed on the Martian surface. Choosing the right power source for a mission to Mars involves balancing various factors, including the mission's duration, the energy requirements, and the safety of the astronauts and equipment. Both nuclear and solar power have their advantages and challenges, and it's likely that a combination of both will be used in future Martian colonies. As we continue exploring energy sources for Mars, an intriguing aspect is the utilization of Martian resources themselves. The concept of in situ resource utilization, ESRU, is pivotal in this regard. ESRU refers to the collection and processing of local materials to support human life and machine operation. 
This approach could significantly reduce the amount of resources that need to be transported from Earth, thereby making Mars missions more sustainable and cost-effective. Mars, with its thin atmosphere, experiences wind. While not as powerful as Earth's due to the thin atmosphere, Martian wind could still be harnessed for energy. The use of wind turbines, adapted for the Martian environment, could complement solar and nuclear power, especially during dust storms when solar panels become less effective. Another potential energy source is geothermal energy. Mars, like Earth, has a core that generates heat. By drilling into the Martian surface, it might be possible to harness this geothermal energy. This approach could provide a steady and reliable power source, unaffected by surface conditions like dust storms or the planet's day-night cycle. The possibility of using hydrogen fuel cells on Mars also presents an exciting avenue. If water ice, abundant in some Martian regions, can be mined and electrolyzed, it could provide hydrogen for fuel cells. These cells could generate electricity and produce water as a byproduct, which is crucial for sustaining human life. Storing and distributing energy efficiently is as important as generating it. On Mars, energy storage systems will need to be highly efficient and capable of withstanding the planet's harsh conditions. Battery technology, possibly similar to what's used on Earth, but adapted for Martian conditions, will play a crucial role. Efficient distribution networks will also be essential to ensure that energy is available where and when it's needed, without significant losses. Robotics and automation will be crucial in the construction and maintenance of energy infrastructure on Mars. Robots could be used for tasks like setting up solar panels, maintaining nuclear reactors, or even constructing wind turbines. This would not only reduce the risk to human life, but also increase the efficiency and speed of setting up the energy infrastructure. While Mars doesn't have an ecosystem like Earth's, environmental considerations are still important. Any energy generation and utilization strategy needs to be sustainable and should not adversely affect the planet's conditions, which could complicate or even jeopardize future colonization efforts. The successful establishment of energy sources on Mars will require international collaboration and innovation. Space agencies, private companies, and academic institutions will need to work together, sharing knowledge and resources to develop technologies that can withstand the Martian environment and efficiently provide energy. As we continue our exploration into the future of Mars colonization, a critical aspect that demands our attention is the reliability and security of energy sources on Mars. The prospect of a Martian society Losing access to energy is not just a hypothetical scenario. It's a real and present danger that could have catastrophic consequences. In this part of our series, we delve into the potential problems that could arise from an energy crisis on Mars and the far-reaching impacts it would have on a Martian society. Energy on Mars is more than just a utility. It's the lifeline of every colony. It powers life support systems, communication with Earth, and essential survival equipment. The harsh Martian environment, with its extreme temperatures, dust storms, and radiation, makes the continuous supply of energy a matter of life and death. Imagine a scenario where a Martian colony experiences a sudden energy blackout. The immediate effect would be the failure of life support systems. These systems, which control oxygen generation, atmospheric pressure, and temperature regulation are critical for human survival. Without power, the habitat would rapidly become uninhabitable, posing an immediate threat to the lives of the colonists. Communication systems reliant on energy would also fail. This would cut off the colony from Earth, leaving them isolated and without the ability to seek help or receive guidance. The psychological impact of this isolation, coupled with the survival threat, could lead to a significant increase in stress and anxiety among the settlers. Furthermore, the disruption of power would halt the production and distribution of water and food. Systems that rely on energy to melt and purify water ice or to power hydroponic farms for food production would cease to function. This would quickly lead to shortages, adding to the growing crisis. The health implications in such a scenario are severe. Medical equipment would be rendered useless. 
and the ability to maintain a clean, sterile environment would be compromised. This could result in a rise in illnesses and injuries, overwhelming any medical facilities and personnel in the colony. Moreover, the societal impact of an energy crisis on Mars could be profound. The breakdown of essential services and the ensuing struggle for survival could lead to social unrest and a decline in morale. The cohesion and cooperative spirit essential for the success of a Martian colony would be severely tested. To mitigate these risks, Martian colonies must have robust, redundant energy systems. A combination of solar, nuclear, and possibly wind energy could provide a safety net in case one system fails. Regular maintenance and rigorous testing of all systems are essential to prevent failures before they occur. Developing comprehensive emergency protocols is also crucial. These would include rapid response strategies for energy failures, rationing plans for remaining power and resources, and clear communication and coordination protocols for crisis scenarios. Training and preparedness are key. Regular drills and simulations would ensure that every individual in the colony knows their role and responsibilities in the event of a power outage. This level of preparedness can be the difference between a managed crisis and a catastrophic one. As we wrap up this episode of Turning the Red Planet Green, it's clear that the quest for energy on Mars is not just a technical challenge. It's a test of our ability to innovate, collaborate, and think beyond the confines of our Earth-bound experiences. The energy solutions we develop for Mars could also have implications for sustainable energy on Earth, making this endeavor not just a leap for space exploration, but also a step towards a more sustainable future for our home planet. Stay tuned as we continue our journey of transforming Mars into a habitable world for future generations.